Okay, so welcome to Kitely and it's the ESL vocabulary session. Now, I explained before that we will look at previous vocabulary um, challenges. Okay, now I know last week's vocabulary challenge was about swimming, but this week's is also a little bit about swimming. So we're not going to look at that. We're going to continue looking at our undies. Okay, we'll look at our underwear. <laughs> you show me yours and I'll show you mine. <laughs> now, I'm going to, I was going to share a document in World, but it's too small and the text is too small. So we'll do that on Google Drive in a minute. Uh, but first, what I'd like us to do is um, read a little bit. Do a little bit of reading and I've got to find my new piece. OK, um, just a few sentences um, and it's a timeline. Do you know what I mean by a timeline? If I asked you to create a timeline of your English learning, would you know what to do? Of, yeah, shiny. You have a line and you have time on it, and it can be vertical or horizontal. Actually, uh, the history. Yeah, the history of that's something. it. It is in based in time. It's usually almost like bullet points, and sometimes you can, um, especially with the internet now, people do these really nice graphics of like the history of the royal family in the UK, and you can go across the timeline, and it is literally linear, and it'll take you from maybe modern day back to prehistoric times and each year or each significant event would be placed on that line and it's called a timeline okay now have any of you ever created one at school or online any of you on facebook uh, google google Photos, for example, it, yeah, make, that's it, it yeah. makes it for me yeah, yeah, automatically. It will create a timeline for you. So will Facebook. It will create a timeline of your posts or significant events uh, or insignificant events quite often. <laughs> yeah, the evolution of the CPU. Yeah, absolutely. The central processing unit. Um, you can see that in the timeline. So if you were to Google timeline and something that you're interested in, uh, an invention maybe, or as you said, the CPU, Sergei, you'll find lots of examples of sometimes well uh, designed timelines, other times not so well, and you can make your own. There's software online which will help you create an interesting timeline. <laughs> uh, you don't use FB. It's it's OK. It's not compulsory. Um, you can also use Twitter. You can also use Google Plus. Uh, as April said, Google Photos will create a timeline for you. <laughs> OK, so we're going to look at um, a fashion timeline. OK, and I don't know if you know what that actually means, but um, an M&S fashion timeline. Can anybody remember what M&S stands for or does anybody know? Marcus and Spencer? Marks and Spencers, no. yeah. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> M&S is what people usually call it. Oh, where did you get that? Oh, M&S. Okay. And last week I explained that M&S are very famous for their undies. Okay. But they're a big company and it's worth looking at their timeline. So I think we'll each take a year. Uh, Shiny, you were the first person to talk to me today. Would you like to read out the first part of this timeline. Uh, yes, uh, 1884, um, Michael, Michael, Marx brings his first store to Leeds Kurt Cook Gate Market. Perfect. Well done. Yeah. And it literally all started off M&S, international chain now multi-million pound company if not billion i'm not sure uh but certainly multi-million pound company probably multi-billion pound company all started off on one little market stall in leeds 
the text is actually on my computer, April. So um, because I tried to share share this, it didn't quite work. So we're going to do it the old fashioned way. OK, um, so Reem, you were the next person to talk to me. Reem, would you like to read the next part of our story? Yes. Yes. Uh, in 1926, uh, 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 MS introduced cars into their stores. These, these were designed, uh, designed to, uh, to create a to, uh, to create a flutter, uh, flutter system, 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 which was a fashion, 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 fashionable at the time. Okay, not bad. Um, I, I knew you were going to have a problem with that first one. Um, but let's let's look at the number first and I'd like you to just read it out to me thinking about what I told you about that last number in a previous session. So it's 1920 what? Yes, six. That's better. Yes, so say the whole thing. 1926. Six. 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 That's six. we get it six, six. yes. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have to work <laughs> on that one just to save your blushes. <laughs> okay, the next word. Yeah, yeah, uh, yes. <laughs> you know why? Okay, the next word is silhouette. A silhouette. Silhouette. Uh, what's the meaning? Silhouette. Yeah, can anybody tell Reem what does silhouette mean? What does it mean if you have a, a silhouette of somebody or you can see a silhouette? Is it's a shape. Um, yes, it's a, it's a shape, but then so is a square and a circle. They're all shapes. It's a kind of shadow, yes. Yeah. It's a black outline of something or somebody um you can get silhouette art you can have your portrait done as a silhouette so it's like the um profile the profile of your face cut out in black paper and we call that a silhouette yes silhouette that's it well done okay the next so, one i i will try uh, before uh, the fashion uh, Without uh, look at the word fashion, fashionable, fashionable, fashionable. Yes, fashionable. That's it. Fashionable. If something is fashionable, it means it's in fashion. Okay. Yeah. I'm not a fashionable person. I'm very unfashionable. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I just can't be doing with it. But some people, oh, they've always got the latest fashion on. <laughs> So a flatter silhouette, April, um, means, well, what is a bra? OK, first of all, what does a bra do? Um, for me, a bra is just a protector. <laughs> a protector? <laughs> not I'm not sure if it protects as much, but it's a porter. It's a supporter. Not me. It supports. <laughs> mine, mine doesn't. <laughs> Mine don't need any protection, actually. <laughs> okay, so it's Sorry, Sergey. Your... Uh, uh, it's... Uh... It supports a woman's boobs, okay? <laughs> it can also be an enhancer. Anybody remember the Wonder Bra? It made you look like you've got more than you actually had. It must have been very disappointing for some gentlemen. Okay. Um... But not, I wouldn't call it a protector unless it was bulletproof. Then I'd say it's a bulletproof bra. bra. It protects, um, it protects you. I'd say it's a support. We, so we also call it a foundation garment. Yeah. 
Now, once you start wearing foundation garments, you know you're of a certain age. <laughs> so, but this one was designed to flatten them, to give a flatter silhouette, so that you looked as if you hadn't, you weren't quite so bounteous. <laughs> Okay, so that's what it means by no, a flatter maybe... silhouette. It was basically big boobs were not fashionable. And so ladies wanted to minimize. You can get minimizing bras now. They'll take you down a whole cup size. Not unisex, oh. Sergei, no. Not unless you've got man boobs. <laughs> and if you've got man boobs that need a bra, you really ought to go to the gym. Or change your shampoo. They have said that some sh types of shampoo can uh, cause man boobs, you know. But no, generally for ladies, just the ladies wear bras. Or, la or people who want to dress like ladies, which is okay too. Chinese typing away furiously. I'm dreading, I'm dreading the message. <laughs> okay, so let's carry on with this timeline. So m and really did become successful as a result of making these bras, to be honest. It was part of their success. Okay. Um, yeah, some people don't want to be huge. I mean, other people have breast enhancement, breast enlargement. Some people have breast reduction. Nobody's actually happy with the boobs they're given, generally. I, I only know one person who's had breast enlargement and she was super happy with them and I was perplexed. <laughs> I, I was perplexed. I was like, yeah, okay, well, she was happy, so what the heck. <laughs> you don't know her, so don't even ask. Okay, so next person to contact me was April. April, would you like to read the next part of the timeline, please? Okay, thank you. 1935, the first MNS textile laboratory is textile laboratory is installed at baker street headquarters if uh, it enabled the company to be first to sell new high quality products innovations for which mns became famous ah, in baker street what yes. has sherlock holmes to do with this <laughs> indeed yeah, it seems weird doesn't it you think baker street really um, but yes, Baker Street, um, their headquarters were there. But I presume, I mean, I don't know if it was Baker Street, London. They were in Leeds, remember? So I presume it was Baker Street, Leeds. <laughs> okay, but a textile laboratory. What do you think they were doing? What were they doing in a textile laboratory? What were they trying to do? Why do you need a laboratory for textiles? What is textile? Can anybody remember our fashion? Yeah, make, experimenting on what? Oh, try try taking the mic because you're making me feel tired all this typing. <laughs> no, nobody wants to speak on the material. Yes. Textile is material. Exactly. Most English cities and towns have a Baker Street. It's not always the Baker Street. That's a nice example, actually, of Baker Street, uh, any old Baker Street, and the Baker Street, the one everybody knows about. <laughs> so you'd say, I presume every English city has a Baker Street. Okay. But yeah, textile, material, fabric. And they were trying to invent new materials, stretchier, more supportive. Um, oh, ah, Monique wants to join us. Did she not get my message? Do, do, do. She's normally very good at opening group messages, but there you go. Hello, Monique. Hi there. Hi there. Can you hear me? Yes. Good. Uh, I, I apologise if you hear some funny noises. 
um, Laika is in the office with me and she's there's a fly in here and she wants to catch the fly so she keeps chasing it so if you suddenly hear a loud bang or something I'm hoping she won't <laughs> need to go to the vet again <laughs> please Laika calm down she's Sounds terrible she's exciting she, oh, she just it's her sport you know she's like never mind fox hunting fly hunting in our house <laughs> okay so um, let me make sure I'm in the right text window close that down Monique is very good at this topic. <laughs> well, we'll see, won't we? So yeah, textiles, um, development, you need a laboratory. And this was at a time, 1935, when a lot of innovation was being carried out in textiles. Um, we had natural fabrics and then suddenly we had these man-made fabrics and people were experimenting on exactly what they could do with them. What can we create? How, what can we use instead of whalebone? We can use plastics uh, instead of silk. We can use nylon um, and instead of expensive lace, we can use manufactured lace. It was all it was quite an exciting time to be around. OK. And then, of course, the war came. But anyway, um, Bob, you were the next person to join us. So if you'd like to read the next part of the timeline. OK. Oh, hang on, no, first... hang on. That's the same. Yeah, it's the same one. I've got a problem here. Hang on, my cut and paste didn't work. Sorry, Bob. Here, yeah, that's yours. So you've got the next year. The central design department is established to keep up to date with fashion trends. Um, Paris Parisian designers are employed as consultants. Very good. Well done. Parisian. A Parisian. Parisian. Yeah. Paris, but Parisian. And why, why Parisian designers? Mm, I suspect they were considered as the most mm, uh, sophisticated, yeah. the most trendy and fashionable and yeah they they just had this je ne sais quoi we we always say that by the way they had a je ne sais quoi they were considered the top fashion designers of their day yeah the most advanced oh, that's the word i, I wouldn't want. say most advanced in the in fashion uh, i think of the most advanced as in technology or knowledge um i think the most the they were the top designers of their day. They were the most fashionable, I would say. The most famous, yes, indeed. Okay, Artem's meant to be joining us, but I don't know what's happened to him. Uh, let me just do a quick online check. Come on, Artem, you can do it. Let's see if he gets that one. Okay, so... Any questions so far? Nope. Okay. Then Monique, I think you're next to read. You get the war years. Things changed a lot. Okay. <laughs> uh, 1941 to 1945. Uh, MNAS technologists work with government scientists to create standards for the Clothing Civilian Act 1941. Due to rationing during wartime, all clothing made during the Second World War was to match these uh, utility standards. MNAS uh, develops a utility range of clothing that is functional, uh, hard wearing, and also decorative. Decorative? Decorative. Ooh, what a shame. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it was a nice try. Decorative? Yes, decorative. 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 Decor. Uh, we say decor. Uh -huh. And to decorate. Decorative. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Artem. Decor. Nice to see you. You got here. Well done. Hello, hello. hello. Okay, don't forget to read. Found you. you found us. Well, I sent you a TP. <laughs> Two, in fact. <laughs> if I wanted you to find this, I'd have made you do hide and seek. <laughs> okay, mute your mic for now because we're just talking about Monique. Thank you. Uh, so, Monique, um, 
The first word there is rationing. 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 Yes, to ration something. Um, now, Shiny's written a why, and I'm not sure. Can you write a full question? Because I'm not sure what you're asking why about, Shiny. Or take the mic. Why what? Why or why or why? Shiny? Big. Yes, 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 I'm talking. I'm afraid you, you will pick up somebody and instead of me. So I have to hurry it up to... Okay, okay, I, I, I just say... Would uh, turn? That's what you mean? No, uh, I mean, why uh, did that make, make this kind of uh, broad in the war time? Rationing. Everything was rationed in the UK during the war. You couldn't buy food without having, um, you couldn't buy it with just money. You also had to have ration tickets and they were given out depending on how many family members you had. So you could get so much cheese, so much bread, so much sugar, so much meat. And um, clothes were also rationed. You had a ration book. And you could buy so much fabric to make your own clothes or you sh or you could buy so many cl you couldn't just go out and buy whatever you wanted it was all rationed and so the government wanted mark because by that by then marks and spencers were a large manufacturing company and the government wanted them to help in getting the most out of the materials they had okay And everything became utilitarian. Now we talk about utilities and they tend to be the things you use for your everyday life. Uh, gas is a utility, electricity is a utility, but things can also be utilitarian. Does anybody know what that means? Utilitarian. Sergei, take the mic. I, I think it's uh, it's when you can take old things, uh, disassemble them, uh, process them s somehow, and then assemble uh, new things. Ah, that from... might be to utilize. I think you're confusing that with the verb to utilize. You to utilize to use what you've got, but utilitarian is more to do with design and practicality. Okay, so everything became mass produced and standardized in order to make the most of the resources that were available. So away went the lace. Lace isn't necessary on a bra or knickers. Um, away went the satin and the um, silk. Cotton's good enough. Uh, and it all became very practical. Everything was practical and a little bit ugly, it has to be said. A lot of schools are very utilitarian. They're not very pretty. <laughs> they won't win any design awards. Is that okay? Do you understand? This, this settee that we're sitting on is quite utilitarian. It's not very pretty, is it? <laughs> But we can utilise it. We can use it. It's what we've got. <laughs> OK. OK, so let's carry on. Oh, I've lost my pet, my place. OK, here we are. Uh, so back to Shiny, I think. And but, last... what, is, oh. what is uh, hard wearing, Lynn? Hard what wearing? What does they mean? Hard wearing? It means it lasts a long time. Ah, so, I thought it was so, so hard, like... Hard to wear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for example, if you go into public buildings quite often, and this looks a little bit like a public building, doesn't it? If you look at the carpet I'm, I'm walking on, yeah? So this carpet is a typical utilitarian carpet, and it's probably very hard wearing. It'll last a long time, many, many years without wearing out. It's not a soft, plush, 
luxurious carpet. It's a utilitarian, hard-wearing carpet, okay? Built utilitarian building. <laughs> utilitarian building has only four walls, minimum windows, and uh, no sculptures, no uh, something Nothing that might extra. might ple yeah. please your eye. No, Nothing it's extra. there to be used. Um, communism created a lot of utilitarian buildings. Oh, you tell me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> they were not best known for their flashy design, were they? Or their architectural beauty. But they put a roof over people's heads, you know. it's. I, I, I always say to people, no, there's enough ugly in the world. We don't need more ugly. If we can build things that are beautiful and nice to look at, it's better for us as humans. But not everyone agrees with me. <laughs> okay, Reem had to go. I, I missed her, sorry. That's the life of a, such is the life of an everyday housewife. <laughs> when the kids start screaming, you've got to go. Okay, then we're back to shiny, I think. Shiny, here's your text. Post-war. The Second World War ended in 1945, so now we're post-war. But we still had rationing, by the way, just in case you're wondering. We had rationing way beyond uh, anyone else in Europe for years and years and years. My mum still had her ration book uh, in the attic. when she, After she died, we were clearing out the attic. We found her old ration book. It was like, wow. <laughs> so, Shiny. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, 1946, a new textile laboratory opens to experiment with nylon, nylons plastics and other synthetic materials. Customers will really like these man-made man -made fabrics that are easy wash, easy care and fade resistant. Very good, well done. Yeah, so suddenly they can start with their laboratory again and instead of the uh, natural materials, they start using synthetic Okay, so synthetic materials. And there was a huge boom in the fashion industry using synthetic materials. And sometimes they weren't so nice. Can anybody think of a famous synthetic material? They've got one here, nylon. Can anybody think of other synthetic materials? Like the leather? When the, no, that's uh, a natural material. Lycra. No, yeah. no, but uh, like, I mean, uh, what you say, uh, synthetic, and it's when they pretend just to look like leather. Ah, okay, yeah, that's it. a forgery. <laughs> but yeah, plastic, again, that would be plastic. Okay. Polyester, yeah, polyester. Have you heard of crimpoline? No. I don't think anybody actually uses it anymore. It was disgusting, but crimpoline became, uh, or is it crimpoline? I'm just not sure now. Oh, no, it's crimpoline, sorry. Not, not a word I use very often, crimpoline. It was like a wonder machine. It was a wonder material, very stretchy, pre-lycra and hilariously awful material. Um, so flammable. And very sweaty. It's an, it didn't breathe at all. But I can remember crimpline. It was like a wonder material because it, it was stretchy. So um, like lycra, it could fit anything and it was cheap to make. And um, yes, what can man, what can, what can, uh, what can I say about it? It was pretty disgusting to, to touch. It used to just like, ah, it was so, I mean, I love cotton. I love wool. Give me crimpoline and I, and I want to scream. <laughs> okay. Let's carry on. Uh, I think April, you're after... Oh, Artem hasn't read yet. So, Artem, let's give you 1947. He. 
1947. Christian Dyer's uh, choral collection in Paris influenced the new look, dress her full, uh, pleated shirt, skirt, and uh, nipped in waist, and the style continues through the 1950s. Very good. Very good. Yeah, the 1950s style. People nowadays, it's what we call um, sort of retro. And some people are very nostalgic for that style. Do you know what it means by a nipped in waist? No. <laughs> okay. um, if you have a very small waist, you want to show it off. And so they started using what we call darts in the material to make the clothing actually follow your body shape more so that you could see that oh it's a tiny waist sometimes it wasn't a tiny waist sometimes somebody would wear a corset and you'd fasten yourself up very tightly in this corset to give yourself an appearance of having a small waist um i can't remember who sort of made the small waist famous but they were tiny i mean tiny you could put your hands around the waist if you can imagine that <laughs> I hope the person who did it had big hands, but um, yes, it is It is also a fashion that's come back in, um, but it's not healthy to have such a tiny waist. And that's, that was normally created by corsets, okay? In Victorian times, ladies almost killed themselves trying to get smaller they've cut themselves in half practically so um to get this tiny waist so let me have a look if i can find you one with a nipped in waist Hey, and men did it as well. Let's let's show this uh, manly style of a nipped in waist. Okay, I'm hoping you'll be able to have a look at this. Yeah, well, people are absurd. Um, we are absurd when it comes to fashion, especially. I hope you'll be able to see that one. But that would be a very good example of a nipped in waist. Cut to cut into the waist. Dope will be wearing that next week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe not. Much, <laughs> uh, no way. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, people will do crazy things, Shiny. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, and I just want to point out, Shiny just went away. I just want to, if Som watches this, Som, did you see that? That's what I meant about Shiny slumping over. <laughs> We were talking about you last night, Shiny. Were your ears burning? Okay, so, ladies, could you help Artem with that pronunciation? Who knows that designer and who knows how to pronounce it? To pronounce it? Anyone? I, so Christian Dior. That's it, Christian Dior. Do you want to try it, Artem? Christian Dior. Christian Dior? Yes. It's nothing to do with Christianity or religion. It's just his name was Christian. Um, he he design he was the designer. He's founded a design empire. Um, you might have seen handbags with CD on them, stylized CD logo. That's Christian Dior. Have that label on your clothing. If it's genuine, you're adding a thousand percent to the cost. <laughs> In a lot of counterfeits. Uh, well, that <laughs> said, if it's if it's uh, <laughs> genuine, I mean, there are a lot of counterfeits in there. I, I can remember seeing a Christian Dior T-shirt in Tunisia. It was something like two quid. <laughs> I was like, yeah, right. <laughs> but I think now that's not so easy to distinguish uh, between a genuine and fake product. No, no. I mean, sometimes you can usually tell by the price. 
uh-huh, yeah, that's, that's a good it's clue. A, it's a good clue. It's a good clue. But if somebody puts the price on and pretends it's the real thing, uh, it is very difficult. Troll beads. I don't know if you've heard of troll beads. They're very fashionable at the moment. They're jewellery made of silver. And these little beads, people collect them. And seemingly you have to be, it was on Rip Off Britain or something on the telly. It just happened to be on whilst I was in the room. I wasn't really fully watching it. That's why I'm not 100% certain. But they showed a woman who was, she'd bought a troll bead for like 600 quid. And she took it to the people who manufacture them in Norway or somewhere. And they said, oh, I'm very sorry, but it's a fake. And she was most upset. Oh. Bless her. <laughs> Yeah, oh, honestly, honestly. OK, so we're up to 1950s and we're doing underwear, not clothing. Um, if I have time, I will uh, share the this document when I can convert it into a, a Google Doc. I'll, I'll put it on the forum. Try and remind me if you in, if I forget and you're interested, just remind me. But I'm going to share a document with you now. Um, so. It's in Google Docs. Not branding, branding. Branding. They weren't the only ones. It's unfair to say um, they were responsible. Um, and it's been done many years before. They, they perfected it, I think. But uh, I can assure you that there's a lot of uh, in-country forgery as well. <laughs> it's not just abroad. It's not just other countries that do it. It's a lot of money. You know, you can make a lot of money like that. OK, so who have we got online? Let's have a look. We've got Anonymous Capybara. <laughs> I don't know who that is, but Anonymous Capybara. Let's see who else joins us. So who's Anonymous? Who's Who can see the document now? I can see it. Okay, that's you, Monique. <laughs> um, you are anonymous capybara, anonymous. <laughs> or, or are oh, you well, anonymous oryx? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Who am I? <laughs> okay, can you tell those who can't see it yet what the what the article is about? Okay, the articles. Uh, the headline is "Every Woman's Fashion Essential." Hmm. So it's something like. Um, yeah, and how a bra is made. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. How do they? I mean, have you, any of you, ever tried to make a bra? No. This is for the ladies. <laughs> <not Okay>. Artem. <laughs> okay, Artem. Maybe why not? If you are a well, designer, why not? No, exactly. Um, I, I know it doesn't come anymore, but Ash, Ash was, he used to design um, corsets. Okay, he used software to do it, but uh, it was very good. It really was. He had fantastic software at university. And I think somewhere in Second Life, I've still got one of his designs. Uh, and it was lovely, really nice. So, yeah, men, men design bras. Marks and Spencers, they were both men. So, and there's a lot. They're very, they were very rich when they passed away, and their company's still going under their name. So, don't sniff at it. You'd be amazed how much money you can make at these things. <laughs> Okay, so I think everybody's in now. Who have we got? We've got Anonymous Oryx, Anonymous Skunk, Anonymous Coyote, and Anonymous Hippo. <laughs> and me. <laughs> okay, so, um, Monique, you were the first one in the document. Could you read the first couple of paragraphs, please? I hold on. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> please, hold on, because I just... You can increase the, vol the, uh, the volume. You can increase the text yeah, size. Yeah. I, I summed it already, but I think that it was too much. Okay. So, um, the first, uh, okay. How a bra is made. Through the skills and close collaboration of Marx and Spencer experts and manufacturers, uh, it is now possible for almost any uh, woman in the country happily to buy over the counter the brassier. Bra oh, no, oh, okay. Brassier she needs for today's silhouette without recourse um, to a fitting room. Should I continue? Yes, please. From the development, yeah. Okay. The development of St. Michael uh, Brassiers into what are within the framework of the mass market essential fashion garments is a story of patience and achievement. 
The full telling of it is a tribute to the understanding collaboration of suppliers with the RAD department at all levels and over a long period. Very good. So if you notice that word bra and brazier are being interchanged, this was a change in the language. Braziers were slightly old fashioned. They were becoming, it was becoming a slightly old fashioned term for what became known as the bra. But the word bra comes from brazier and that of course comes from what language? French. French, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay very nicely read no corrections and um yeah well done well done okay so um who would like to read next i'm not quite sure how they how how you came in so and i'm not sure who's who so who can see the text just type up mike if you'd like to read and you can see the text Nobody wants to read. I would like, but someone is a neighbor above me just drilling the walls and it's asking you. Won't be able to understand what I'm reading actually. Do you hear that noise? Oh yeah. What's that? <laughs> I have no idea. It's no. a neighbor okay. above me. <laughs> but I can hear you now, okay. How come? Shall I? I'll cut and paste. Oh no, I can't cut and paste, can I? Um... No, I don't think I can. I can't scan it as text. So, okay, well, never mind. Um, then, Shiny, if you would like to read the next couple of paragraphs, please. Sorry, Artem. Yes, thank you. It's a St. Michael brought today over... Uh, I can't read this word because it's not really and glamour instead of bone stand misery. It is not through luck. It is because executives in the department had the vision to plan a system of graining which would fit the great majority of women in over-the-counter not fitting room purchases scores of models were examined dozens of averages worked out before the present size present size and gradings could be decided upon 300 Variations, yeah, stop, a stop, major stop, of stop, stop, stop. their planning lies in the fact that the current bra range allows on size, color, and cup feeding alone. That is not including styles of, of over a hundred and thirty permutations. We style as well. This figure increases too well over to well over 300 very good okay good. well done nicely read okay now a couple of words for you first and then we'll look at some of the actual uh, vocabulary there um offers not others offers 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 not offers off like off can you say off off yeah offers offers yeah that's it well done good and then the word you couldn't see um, is see. comfort. Comfort. Yeah, comfort and glamour. Yeah, comfort. Glamour. And then the next comfort one is grading then. from to grade something. To grade it. Grading. Grading, yeah. So, for example, if you're sitting an exam, you want a good grade. You want... Uh, if you're doing a course, you want a good grade at the end. Grading. But you can also grade things by size. Small, medium, large. That's very simple size grading. Okay. Then the next one, purchases. Not purchases, purchases. 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 Yeah. And then it's not present size, it's present size. The size of people at the present, at the moment. 
present sight. Yes. Then variations. Variations. Yes. So to vary, if things vary, they're not all standard. I mean, you have to admit, when it comes to humans and body size, we vary. There are many variations. And different permutations. Right? Permutation. Yes. Permutations. Permutations. We're all people, but we don't come as standard. How many permutations are there of hair colour, eye colour? Uh, if we were, let's all stand up. Can everybody stand? In here. Okay. Now, Amy, Artem, Sergey. Okay, let's see. Okay, I'd like us to grade ourselves. Sergey, can you stand? Artem's trying to kick you off the chair, Sergey. <laughs> it won't work, Artem. <laughs> 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 I know what you tried to do. It's not going to work. Yeah. Not when somebody's sitting. <laughs> do it when they're standing, but not when they're sitting. Okay, now, if we look at this, if we grade each other in si by size, I think I'm the shortest. Oh, my goodness. And uh, then it's shiny and April, I think. April, can you move next to shiny? So that we can see... Okay, Hi. you're about the same. And then I think Monique is the tallest amongst the ladies. Monique, could you stand next to Artem and just see who's the tallest? I think you're about the same size. Okay. Well, I'm going to get the fair. <laughs> so that's, that's the grading. Now, the permutation is we have all have avatars and you can pick up the same avatar, but you can put it together differently. You can, there are many different permutations of hair, uh, clothing. You don't all have to be it the same. Like, Sorry, it sounds like variation. Yeah, almost like Would variation. Say... Yeah, absolutely. The possibilities okay. which, in which things can be ordered and arranged. Different permutation, mm. uh, permutations, okay? Okay. Ladies, you can sit down now. <laughs> <laughs> You're so polite, Artem. <laughs> Half crushed. Sergey, so, okay, that's you. DNA, yeah, DNA um, has, how many different permutations are there of DNA? Oh my goodness. I told you to learn big numbers. Uh, okay, let's have a look. How many permutations of human DNA are there? Let's see if anybody can answer that on Google. Let's ask Google, my friend Google. <laughs> Best teacher in the oh, Google's slow. He's calculating it. Then I'll kill Google. Okay, we'll go to Forbes instead. So, how many possible permutations of DNA, of how DNA can um, be arranged? And. Billions, billions. Oh, yes, more than billions. <laughs> Yeah. Billions is tiny. Okay. Billions. There are 7 billion <laughs> humans. We know there are 420 billion different variations possible. Oh. And um, yeah, uh, how many different permutations there can be in embodied in human DNA. It's It's a, it's a number so large you can't even I can't even write it out. You have to have the formula to write it out. It's basically practically to infinity, um, not a number. <laughs> Interesting fact. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so many permutations, a lot, a lot. <laughs> yeah, how many? A lot. Right, <laughs> you cannot it. count them. That's all. <laughs> Ask Google. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, the way you can rearrange something, the, how many permutations you can have of that thing, well, it's it's almost, and I should say, like variation, like varieties, but it's more to do with a group of things 
Now you can have different varieties of things, but you can different permutations of the same thing. Okay. okay. What is the difference with the mutation then? Mutation. Well, it's a funny word mutation because you could think of mutation as evolution. But if you think about mutation... Yeah, no, 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 nowadays I met a lot of mutants, actually. Well, <laughs> people say mutation, but um, what is mutation? It's just a new, new arrangement. It's a different permutation of something. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And those things that work carry on to mutate in other ways. Those that don't work perish, I'm afraid to say. But yeah, permutation and mutation... A mutation is a different permutation. <laughs> okay, April. Oh gosh, you've got another limit. That's far too much for a, a topic on bras and underwear. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is Chinese folks. Chinese. Yeah. The we are moving to science. <laughs> Do you think DNA has its limitations? Okay, now let me just put it this way. Maybe I can get Hubby to come and uh, give a top, give a talk on that. But uh, I am not qualified. <laughs> I think everything has its limitations. But when those limitations are in the hundreds of millions and billions and trillions and zillions, I don't think we need to worry about it just now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what a relief. <laughs> I think I got away with that one. <laughs> okay, so um, we'll leave that here because we've run out of time, as we always do. Any questions about bras? But have a look at the article as well. Um, and you can see it's really interesting because... The design might have changed, but the actual process is still pretty much the same. You have your designers, your cutters, your um, um, dressmakers, uh, your pattern makers. And I think it's one of those things that I don't think has been really um, handed over to machinery yet because the actual manufacture of this garment is so complex robots can't really do it it's these these things are still actually made by hand in a very similar way to this article um in fact in a soap there's a soap opera called coronation street i've mentioned it before and the ladies in that soap opera actually work in an underwear factory and they all sit at sewing machines sewing together bras and knickers so <laughs> if you want a future-proof job at the moment Become a, a bra and knickers seamstress. <laughs> How often do I replace when they need it? Um, I don't buy things just because they're near and shiny. I buy them when I think, oh, this is coming uncomfortable or, oh, no, the hook and the eye have gone. I can't be bothered to buy a new one or it's all gone a bit, the elastic's going. That's when I buy a new one. But they last a pretty long time. I actually buy my bras from Bravissima. If Bravissima would like to send me some free samples for their plug, <laughs> please do. <laughs> so I, I go to England to buy my bras, OK? I used to buy from Marks and Spencers, but I like Bravissima now because they're really pretty. <laughs> you can look at them online if you want. You can actually see their website. They've got a lovely website and you'll see how pretty they are. Um, Bravissimo. Where are they? Oh, maybe I can't find it under that. Uh, there you go. Here it is. Bravissimo. Bravissimo. There you go. <laughs> they do swimwear as well. <laughs> okay. And lots of vocabulary on that website as well. Um, oh, yeah, the one thing I wanted to cover in today's session was they mentioned about the sizing. One size fits all doesn't does not cover bras. But do you know how bras are measured? What measurement do you take for a bra when you're looking at a bra to buy off the shelf? 
and nobody gets well i suppose <laughs> maybe madonna gets a first size, first size, second size, I'm look, you, third are not, size. you are not looking first for bra, yeah, you <laughs> Artem, you are not broke. So you, are, you can't talk about that. You, you don't wear that. April? <laughs> you were saying A, double A, triple A? Double A. Yeah. But they don't have it. Oh, yeah, They don't have it for, my, for me. But no, what they, what they usually do is they obviously measure around the chest, but then they talk about cup size. Okay. The cup size. And the cup size is A, double A, up to, I don't know, I think some of them can be pretty crazy, uh, especially with a little bit of plastic added in. Um, you can get all sorts of different size to D and L, which are pretty massive, quite scary. But yeah, A <laughs> to L. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cup size. <laughs> Bull, bullet, bullet size. I just huge. I mean, I, I think if you've got that size, you probably should think about Ooh, breast. Who it says? It's, it can't be good for your back carrying that much weight around. It really can't. But, you know, it happens. Some people are just well endowed. OK. But anyway, we will stop there with our underwear session. And uh, hopefully you've learned a few more bits of vocabulary. Maybe a bit more useful for the ladies than the gentlemen. But... Come Valentine's Day, if you do want to buy some nice underwear for your beloved, at least you know to ask her her cup size. <laughs> okay, rather than standing in the shop going, she's about this so, big. <laughs> are you going to buy bra for, for her billion on Valentine's Day? Oh, well, no. <laughs> And he knows not to buy me any because I buy my own. But some men like to buy that sort of thing for their ladies. Now, I do want to share a video with you. Um, we're not going to watch it together because we haven't got time. But this is one of my favourite videos. Uh, bear with me. Um, now I've got to find the right one. It's... Uh, okay. Where the hell will die? Uh, okay. There's no way out. Okay, so this is um, from Father Ted. Do have fun watching it. You only buy... Sh I'm not going to read that out, Shiny. But have a, have a watch of that. This is how men can sometimes react to ladies' underwear, okay? It's very funny. So enjoy. And I'll be in TGIF in 15 minutes. I'm going to go and make myself a cup of tea. And I'll probably come back and watch that video again because I just can't get enough of it. Okay? <laughs> have fun. Okay. See you later. Bye. Bye. You're welcome, Shiny. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Sometimes well uh, designed timelines, other times not so well. And you can make your own. There's software online which will help you create an interesting timeline. <laughs> uh, you don't use FB. It's, it's okay. It's not compulsory. Um, you can also use Twitter. You can also use Google+. Plus. Uh, as April said, Google Photos will create a timeline for you. <laughs> okay. So we're going to look at um, a fashion timeline, okay? And I don't know if you know what that actually means, but um, an M&S fashion timeline. Can anybody remember what M&S stands for? Or does anybody know? Marcus and Spencer? Marks and Spencers, no. yeah. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> M&S is what people usually call it. Oh, where did you get that? Oh, M&S. Okay. And... Last week, I explained that m and are very famous for their undies, okay? But they're a big company, and it's worth looking at their timeline. So I think we'll each take a year. Uh, Shiny, you were the first person to talk to me today. Would you like to read out the first part of this timeline? Uh, yes, uh, 1884, um, Michael... Michael, 
Marx brings his first store to Leeds Kirk Kirk Gate Market. Perfect. Well done. Yeah. And it literally all started off M and S, international chain now, multi million pound company, if not billion, I'm not sure. Uh, but certainly multi-million pound company, probably multi-billion pound company, all started off on one little market stall in Leeds. Uh, the text is actually on my computer, April, so um, because I tried to share share this, it didn't quite work. So we're going to do it the old-fashioned way, OK? Um, so, Reem, you were the next person to talk to me. Reem, would you like to read the next part of our story? Yes. Yes. Uh, in 1926, uh, 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 M.S. introduced parts into their stores. These, these were designed, uh, designed to, uh, to create a stock to create a flutter, uh, flutter system, 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 system uh, which was yeah, the history of that is dancing. It. it is in based in time. It's usually almost like bullet points, and sometimes you can, um, especially with the internet now, people do these really nice graphics of like the history of the royal family in the UK and you can go across the timeline and it is literally linear and it'll take you from maybe modern day back to prehistoric times and each year or each significant event would be placed on that line and it's called a timeline okay now have any of you ever created one at school or online any of you on Facebook? Uh, Google Google Photos, for example, it yeah, make, it, it yeah. makes it for me. Yeah, yeah, automatically. It will create a timeline for you. So will Facebook. It will create a timeline of your posts or significant events uh, or insignificant events quite often. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the evolution of the CPU. Yeah, absolutely. The central processing unit. Um, you can see that in the timeline. So if you were to Google timeline and something that you're interested in, uh, an invention maybe, or as you said, the CPU, Sergey, you'll find lots of examples of... Uh, fashion, fashion, uh, fa fashion, 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 at the time. Okay, not bad. Um, I, I knew you were going to have a problem with that first one. Um, but let's let's look at the number first. And I'd like you to just read it out to me, thinking about what I told you about that last number in a previous session. So it's 1920 what? Yes, six. That's better. Yes, so say the whole thing. 1926. No, no, 1926. That's, six. get it, six, six. yes. 1926. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to work <laughs> on that one just to save your blushes. <laughs> okay, the next word. Yeah, yeah, uh, yes. <laughs> you know why. Okay, the next word is silhouette. A silhouette. Silhouette. Uh, what's the meaning of silhouette? Yeah, can anybody tell Reem what does silhouette mean? What does it mean if you have a, a silhouette of somebody or you can see a silhouette? Is that it is moderate, a shape. Um, yes, it's a, it's a Okay, so welcome to Kitely and it's the ESL vocabulary session. Now, I explained before that we will look at previous vocabulary um, challenges. Okay, now I know last week's vocabulary challenge was about swimming, but this week's is also a little bit about swimming. So we're not going to look at that. We're going to continue looking at our undies. 
Okay, we'll look at our underwear. <laughs> You show me yours and I'll show you mine. <laughs> now, I'm going to, I was going to share a document in World, but it's too small and the text is too small. So we'll do that on Google Drive in a minute. Uh, but first, what I'd like us to do is um, read a little bit, do a little bit of reading. And I've got to find my new piece. OK, um, just a few sentences um, and it's a timeline. Do you know what I mean by a timeline? If I asked you to create a timeline of your English learning, would you know what to do? Kind of, yeah, Shiny. You have a line and you have time on it and it can be vertical or horizontal. Actually, uh, the history 